Hey guys, something a little different for this video. I wanted to show you a bit more behind the scenes of what exactly I do around here. Uh, so here's a little instructional video on skinning reptiles and how I attempt to preserve as much of every animal as I can. Starting with my dissection tools, camera equipment. I don't have a mullet, I promise, I just didn't put my hair up for filming that day waste container, and preserving chemicals. I know these gloves aren't really meant for keeping germs off my hands, but I like the thickness and grip so I don't stab myself with a scalpel. So I got a juvenile boa constrictor here to skin. I'll explain where I source some of my exotic corpses later in the video, but for now, let's jump into it. Snakes at this stage can be a little difficult to work with when rigor mortis has set in, but we'll make the best of it. With a fresh blade on my scalpel, I start by making a long, shallow incision on the ventral side, from the opening of the cloaca towards the head. You really want to make this cut as lightly as you can, being sure to only penetrate the scaly skin without puncturing the peritoneal cavity or any intestines. This may cause the bowels to, uh, uh, gross. Let me give this a quick rinse. I'm still a little new to this too. Half the battle is the guts to do it, you know what I'm saying? This was the first time experimenting with this chest-mounted camera, and I lost a lot of footage to some bad angles. Luckily, I also set up my time-lapse camera to get past all this tedious work. The more fresh the corpse, the better. So this one is a little rough. The goal at this point is to separate the skin from the connective tissue that is holding it to the muscle. Notice that I'm not skinning all the way around the back, I'm just separating from the muscle until you can see the white of the underside of the skin. I'm going to do that the whole way down. I guess this is as good a point as any to actually take the guts out. With an incision all the way down, it should be an easy enough task to get a good grip and pull them out all at once, just like when you gut a fish. You slippery, slimy guts. Look closely, and you can follow the esophagus down to the stomach, intestines, and all the way down to the cloaca. While most of it is not worth salvaging, I am going to take this piece here. With these few cuts, I will separate the heart from the rest of the innards.
Once the skin is free of the grip of that connective tissue, it should be a simple enough task to just grab and start firmly pulling. A lot of people extend their incision all the way to the bottom of the tail. I always just leave it. No particular reason. I just deglove it by pulling it inside out. It takes a lot more finesse to get the skin off the face. I'm also preserving the skull of this specimen, so I don't want to break or cut any of the delicate facial bones. The next step, which is arguably the most important step, is the one I got the worst footage of, defleshing. The more flesh you get off the skin now, the better. Professional taxidermists will be sure to extract every morsel of meat and connective tissue leaving just the skin. Be sure to use a dull blade and use a scraping motion to prevent cutting through the skin. Don't worry, the disposable blade was pretty dull after skinning all those snake scales. I'm not gonna lie, I was getting sick of this scalpel at the time, so I left a lot on there for now, which is fine. Uh, it's a little easier to remove in a later step. Just get as much as you can here. Next is this chameleon. Same thing where I made a shallow incision from cloaca to chin and I started separating the connective tissue. The chameleon is much more delicate, so I will not be grabbing and yanking the skin. This will have to be micromanaged from beginning to end. Also, the chameleon has these funny things sticking out, like arms. This will not be a taxidermy-worthy pelt. I will not be removing the feet or the face. Chameleons, like many lizards, actually don't have muscle or connective tissue under the skin of the face, like on the boa constrictor. Instead, the skin of the face is actually a thin cover bound tightly to the bony osteoderms. After I made this video, I found out that basically the best way to remove this skin is to get some decent steel hemostats, clamp them down, and lock it on the edge of the face skin, and roll it, slowly peeling the skin off. Here's the full chameleon cape for your viewing pleasure. You've probably noticed by now that the chameleon has ribs that run down its entire body. This presented an interesting challenge. I also wanted to preserve the skeleton of this animal, so to remove the guts, I made a small incision on the bottom of the belly near the hips. From there I was able to fit my forceps up inside to pull everything out. Again, I'm very sorry for the bad chest camera angle, but maybe for this shot, it was for the best. Before we move on to the next bit on tanning lizard leather, it's time to prepare the bodies. With the chameleon, I'm going to use some pins to attempt to position the body on this stick. It's still an, an experimental trial, but I think it paid off in the end. I'll let you be the judge of that. A much easier task is to position the boa on the dissection pan. Using a piece of junk to prop the mouth open. 
Then, both of them are placed in front of a fan overnight to dry. If you've been following me for any amount of time, these two animals should be beginning to look very familiar to you. They were some of my most popular Dermested Beetle time-lapse videos on my YouTube channel, seen here. Even though these time-lapses were done quite a long time ago, uh, the finished products are still up for sale on my website. The price may seem a little high, but I challenge you to find pieces this high quality for cheap. Also, these corpses were sourced from a local reptile rescue. Whenever they have an animal that doesn't survive and it makes its way to my hands, I split the profits 50-50. I give back in hopes that they have the funds to give better care to the next animal they receive. Okay, now back to the skins. Tanning reptile skin is easy enough. Uh, here's that chameleon that I just skinned. And here's that boa that I just skinned. I've defleshed them as much as I can, but, or as much as I, I, I defleshed them some, but we'll de be defleshing more later, so that's okay to leave it for now. Also, I have frozen uh, that bearded dragon skin from a video I did a long time ago. I'll be going to, I'll be going ahead and putting that in there as well. This is empty. There's no peroxide in it. So this is just empty. The two ingredients we're gonna need are glycerin. Now glycerin uh, used to be easy to come by. It can be found in any aisle in the pharmacy. Um, it can be found in the Imodium aisle, uh, the cosmetics aisle, makeup remover aisle, um, skin care. Um, I don't know, I've seen it probably in every aisle in different stores, depending on what store you go to. However, uh, it can be dangerous. Um, it's glycerin. Kids can make bombs with it, I think. So they've pulled it from most shelves. It's really hard to find nowadays. Whenever I find it, I load up. They're typically only found in these three ounce bottles. If you're lucky, you can find a six ounce. but it's just glycerin, pure glycerin. So one part glycerin, 50%, and one part isopropyl alcohol. Uh, I've read a lot into what type of alcohol, I mean, what, what percentage of isopropyl, and it doesn't entirely seem to matter whether you're using 70%, 90%. Um, because it's going 50% with the glycerin, there's not gonna be a whole lot of water anyways. So whichever, this is 70%. Worth its weight in gold nowadays. I'm just using the glycerin bottle to measure out a rough, you know, one part glycerin, one part alcohol. Now glycerin is really thick. That's why I'm putting it in this other bottle first just so I can mix it up. Hope this is enough. That's why I use these baggies. Uh, if it's not enough, you can always squeeze the air out of the baggie and make less volume. Oh yeah, that should be plenty. So this is going to cure the skins. Um, and essentially, I mean, I just leave it like that. And then every once or twice a day, I'm gonna get in here and I'm just gonna mix it up. Um, 
Especially that bearded dragon skin is still kind of stiff, but mix it up. And then after three or so days, it should be finished and we can move on to the next step. If you've made it this far, you owe me a subscribe. Even if it's just to make sure you don't miss part two of this reptile skinning video, where I'll go over skin stretching, drying, and cutting. Be sure to check out my website. It's growing all the time, and I can't wait to share more with you guys. Also, if you haven't already, go find Wasatch Exotics Rescue and throw them some love. You can find them on Instagram and Facebook. And while you're at it, go donate a few bucks. They are the only 501c3 nonprofit exotics rescue in the state of Utah, and they do great work. Tell them I sent you.